got a two year review video of this scooter. Sim. Lance. Cabo 125. Before I bought this, I researched online what, what the uh, best scooters were that weren't the super expensive Honda, Suzuki, Yamaha, you know, the real top of the line brands. And uh, I came across the Sim. They used to make motors for Honda. You want to Google it and make sure what I'm saying is right. But uh, so they're, they're a step above all the cheap scooters. I paid $2,000 cash out the door for this. And uh, the cheap scooters are going to be $1,600, $1,700. And then the top of the lines, the Hondas, the Yamahas, you might pay, uh, you know, $32, four grand for a similar similar uh, vehicle. I mean, you could pay even more if you really wanted to. But for like a 125, 150, that size of motor. And so uh, for just three or $400, if you're interested in buying one of these, uh, don't buy a cheap one, it's gonna fall apart. This, I highly recommend this company. I had a used one from this company. Uh, I think it was a 2007 or 2009 maybe it was used and it sat around for a long time so it had a couple problems from sitting and not being used and whatnot but but uh it, it rattled a lot a lot of the plastic would rattle and i noticed in the new the new models it's just it's real quiet i've since dumped it i've dumped it numerous times and usually when you got a motorcycle or a two-wheeler when it falls over when you dump it usually these brake levers and well this will be a clutch on a motorcycle but this is the brake usually they'll bend and snap off and i think this model has a little extension here you can see where it's bent on this one from hitting hard i don't know if it's that extension that's saving it or what but I, this has fallen over several times and there's no damage whatsoever with the exception of uh cracked the fender here you can see where i ran into a dumpster here uh various scrapes and whatnot from hitting stuff but uh i'm really impressed with this scooter the only damage to it is stuff i've done I, the car almost ran me over and i dumped the whole thing sitting at an sitting at an intersection or sitting uh waiting to make a left turn the car came out it was coming right at me and uh i dumped it hard and it snapped off uh, a little little thing in there little piece of steel snapped off and uh i mean that's how hard it fell over to snap that steel you know it didn't do anything that really mattered a whole lot i put my first hole in it carrying something just a few weeks ago about a month ago or so and i noticed in here and i've never seen this on the motorcycles i owned before this has a, a layer of, of a, like a plastic couple layers multiple layers hey you know what there's actually still a layer of plastic intact so uh that's nice i wonder why it wasn't getting wet my motorcycles they get holes in them uh and then it rains and it gets waterlogged it's like sitting on a sponge but this one's got a layer of plastic that's still intact i didn't notice that till just now but i didn't i didn't see any any plastic whatsoever on my motorcycles it was just this black fabric and then the and then the foam and it's got a real nice wide comfortable seat whereas a motorcycle lots of times it'll be kind of skinny and it's just a, a road traveling big rig motorcycle uh motorcycles can be pretty uncomfortable unless you get you know like a gold wing or something you know <laughs> kind of go coast to coast on but uh anyways nice wide cushion seat is something you might not think of if you're thinking about buying a vehicle like this but uh you will regret not getting a nice wide soft seat a thin hard seat is extremely uncomfortable if you're going to spend any amount of time on it i've scared i've carried scrap metal down here and chewed up the seat and uh, that's the only damage i'm trying to find the damage first off but i can't be more impressed with this bike it runs just like the day i bought it and it's actually been a little over two years Thirteen thousand nine seventy three. so we'll just caught uh, fourteen thousand miles 
14,000 miles in a little over two years. And that's not a lot of miles, but uh, I don't I don't ream it out like going down a highway if I'm in a 50, 55, 61 hour zone. I don't ream it out. I always try to leave a little off because it feels like if you just run it flat out for a long time, it feels like it's just gonna burn up. I don't know if that's true, but that's just the feeling I get. So I always take a little off. I never, I never totally stress it out. But with that being said, I, I haul scrap metal. For those of you who haven't watched my channel before, I haul scrap metal and uh, I haul big loads of stuff in here. And I constantly violate the load limit, not by a lot, but I do. Um, so it would be like the equivalent of uh, 350, uh, 350 pound human riding it, or you know, two. Uh, 170 pounders 275 pound people and this 125 it handles it real good man uh, unless you're going up a steep hill there's really not a whole lot of power loss i mean i'll carry 150 up towards the 200 pounds of scrap metal and i weigh about 175 so uh, uh i just uh, can't be more impressed with this vehicle the way it's holding up oh what i was getting to say is i scavenge i do dumpster diving and i basically do the worst kind of traveling a vehicle can go through. Constant stop and go, stop and go, stop and go, stop and go, stop and go. <laughs> I treat it nice, I don't ream it out, but it's constant stop and go, stop and go, stop and go. So, you know, and carrying carrying heavy loads and uh, you really can't do anything worse to a vehicle than that. And uh, 14,000 miles, not a single problem uh, that I haven't caused myself. And even that is holding up good, you know. It's probably fallen over 10 times, maybe, left and right. And uh, there's no damage to speak of. Other than that, it's a little twisted. Let's get to it. I'm gonna change the gear oil. I bought this stuff online in bulk, so I have a lifetime supply for this scooter of gear oil and a lifetime supply for the scooter of this uh, scooter specific oil I, I, can't, I can't find a website anymore I think it was a liquidation when I bought it but this is $15 at the store at the dealership and I got it for $5 a bottle online I got like 40 or 50 bottles in bulk I did the numbers on this and I spend now these are real dangerous I can't really recommend anyone drive these on the street because cars simply sometimes they don't see you and you can easily get ran over and even a simple fender bender could cost you broken bones and maybe your life so they're super dangerous because people don't see you so for that reason i can't really recommend anyone buying a vehicle like this but with that being said after the two thousand dollars i paid out the door uh in the last must have been 26 months or so 25 months since i've bought it I've put, I did the numbers, I've, I've spent under $700. That includes insurance, that includes all the fuel, that includes everything. Um, I, I didn't count this because I had bought it, but that was like, uh, I'm gonna end up putting maybe uh, a couple hundred dollars of oil and a couple hundred dollars of gear oil in it over its lifetime. But, but uh, as far as just everyday costs, it's under, under uh, oh no, wait, what was it? Three, it was 360. I think like $360 a year were the numbers. I, I should have done the numbers again, but it doesn't really matter. It's in that ballpark. So it gets, it's supposed to get about 80 miles, 90 miles a gallon. I don't, I'm only getting about 60 miles a gallon. I think it's because I got a flat tire when I first bought it, like a month after I bought it. And I put a little dinky front wheel. I used it on the back and it was real small. And I don't know if I did something to maybe the belt in there or something but when i put that little tire on there my gas mileage went way down to 60 miles and the vehicle itself the top speed came down about five miles an hour and i figured now i got an oversized tire this, this is uh one one notch one size taller than the factory tire and uh, i figured that might change it but i still i'm going to get about 60 miles a gallon maybe 70 miles if i just run it on the highway but uh Anyways, I just figured that might open some eyeballs. Two years, about $700 is my transportation cost. So, <laughs> uh, 
a work truck, you might spend that much in gas in a month. Just gas, you know. So for $700, uh, you know, I mean, it might be uh, $1,400 insurance per year for a big vehicle, you know. So there was a movie with Steve Carell. I should have Googled it before I come down here. But he, uh, he was sitting at the gas station in this movie. I think he just lost his job or something. And uh, he, <laughs> a scooter pulled up to the gas station and filled up for like $2. <laughs> and he was filling up for like $80. And eyes opened. But uh, anyways, as good as it is financially, the risk of dying probably goes up 10%. Uh, not 10%, probably, probably a thousand percent risk of getting hurt, ran over, killed. So, anyways, I have, I basically have the reactions of a common mongoose, and I've had several, several times, so there's just really nothing I could do. I've been hit twice, and uh, ran into a curb once and crashed. And <laughs> So they're dangerous. They are dangerous. So, anyways, make up your own mind on that situation. I like my oil pan. <laughs> That's just a piece of scrap metal. So, Let's go into the scrap yard. I don't want to get oil in my band aid though, do I? Well, that's not a good angle. Oh, shoot. <laughs> I guess it doesn't matter what I want. There goes the filter. Turn off some filter spring. Cool thing about this guy is it's got this little magnet. Oh, the magnet came off. There's supposed to be a magnet stuck to that. Where is the magnet? That's the question of the day. It's supposed to be a little little silver magnet it's kind of strange it would leave that steel spring another money saving option on this deal is you never have to replace an oil filter there is no oil filter with the exception of this reusable one here there's the oil filter right there you think about that just clean that guy off and stick it back up in there so there's no buying an oil filter every oil change a common comment i get in my videos is uh why don't you use a truck you can make more money and stuff but that's generally coming from people that haven't actually thought about the uh debt column in your business or in your money making ways debt column is a very important very important column <laughs> i think 700 dollars over two years transportation cost including insurance and tags and registration and gas including absolutely everything um oh, actually i didn't include the bulk oil that's just a couple hundred dollars and maybe i did it's not going to change anyways it's not going to change a whole lot anyway under a thousand dollars for two over two years so that's actually huge that's i mean <laughs> i mean i know there was a scrapper on youtube i don't know if he's still doing it or not but it was called the scrap kingdom i think and uh he was a scrapper professional scrapper and he said he spends eight to nine thousand dollars a year just on gasoline so uh seven hundred dollars thereabouts over two years that that should perk up some ears and make it a little more understandable why i don't care about carrying around refrigerators and ovens and stoves water heaters sure they can be good money but oh well you know <laughs> it's the price i pay there's pros and cons to everything I mean, 
I'm just set in my ways. And I think sometimes people see something they might not understand. It's natural to say, why don't you do this? And you're, you're a moron. And why don't you do that? And, uh, it's true. I mean, other people do it. And they're extremely successful doing it. But, uh, different strokes for different folks, you know. I gotta find that magnet. That's perplexing. I can't believe that would come off of there. I wonder, how that, I wonder if that came off when I dumped the bike real hard. It should still, it should have still came back though. It should have still came back to the bottom. It must have came off. It must have came off of here. There it is. <laughs> there it is. I'm surprised it bounced off there. That wasn't that far hard of a fall, but there it is. Right there. Let's see. The first time I changed the oil, there was tons of little metal filings on here. You, you can see that's got a metallic, looks like a metallic paint. So it's got some real fine, real fine shavings. Not like a dust. Can't really call them shavings. It's like a dust on there. But I thought that was pretty slick. My motorcycles didn't have this. My motorcycles didn't have a magnet. So that's pretty cool. Engines will produce little little magnets or little metal fragments. Metal on metal. And uh, of course you don't want that floating around in your oil, you know. And of course it's going to be heavy and it's going to sink to the bottom. And then this magnet will sit here. For those of you who haven't seen this. Magnet will sit on there like something like that at the very bottom of the oil reservoir and uh, just collect all that stuff. I thought that was pretty slick. For those of you tuning in on a how to video to change the oil and gear oil, you may have never changed the gear oil on a scooter. There's two on this scooter, there's two nuts. You're gonna take out this one, you're gonna take out that one. That's the drain plug. This is uh, where, you, where you pump it into. You're supposed to take out the upper one first. So I'm actually overdue on the gear oil uh, and the engine oil, but the engine oil, I constantly put fresh oil into it. So it's not all that terrible of a situation because there's constantly brand new oil being put into it. But the gear oil, this is the longest I've went without changing it. One thing you have to be careful of is not tightening these down too tight. For one thing, a steel bolt against the aluminum motor can crack the aluminum. And uh, I've got this one tight. I've got the bolt starting to round off. And the socket is just spinning. It's not going to do it. So uh, if worse comes to worse, I suppose I can lay down the bike on its side and hopefully maybe it can drain out of here. But at least I'll be able to put some fresh stuff in there. Worst, absolute worst case scenario. But I've got some, I've got some uh, vice grips here. See, I'm going to have to find a way to get this out of here order a new plug drain plug this bolt for for this bike online somewhere this is getting getting real bad i probably have a habit of tightening them a little too tight <laughs> even though i know it's a real bad idea so never over tighten these they say to use a torque wrench so you don't over tighten them when you tighten them you want to just get them tight and then just go just a little extra turn but uh hopefully this will work let's see oh, it's just stripping out shoot huh uh, we've got video by moron now how to change girl by moron moron man
Well, I'm gonna see how much I can get out of it by leaning the bike over. Well, it's a good thing that that's coming out of there because that means at least there's still this gear all in there, quite a bit of it. Unfortunately, I'm not gonna be able to get the sludge, the sludge from the very bottom of it. The good thing about this bike, this deal, changing this gear oil, is this two represents one basically exact amount that you need to put in there. You totally drain this out the proper way and then cut the top tip off this. You wanna cut, the, actually I think you're supposed to puncture it. I have a hard time puncturing it. So I just cut the very tip off with my snips. You wanna make sure the tip's still small enough to stick in the hole. And uh, there goes another Band-Aid. So I really like that feature, that part of it. It's pretty slick. You don't, there's no, like with oil, you gotta check with the dipstick, and blah, blah, blah. And I like this, you just squirt a complete tube of this in there. Kinda like that. And then, uh, of course, you would put the drain plug back in. Not tight, do not over tighten it. That's just nothing but trouble. And uh, it's kind of got a bad angle. The design's just a little goofy. I mean, it's fine, it's no big deal. But for a tube like this, you almost want an extension. Cause you see, you can't get straight in there. You kind of got to go on an angle. It's not that big of a deal, but I just want to find something to complain about, I guess. But here we go. We're gonna find out how much, how much was in there. camera's got a better angle on it than I do um let's see I think it's draining out of there see I didn't get very much out of there huh so it's good in one aspect that like engine oil will burn up I have to constantly change engine oil this thing was basically still full I just think it was really dirty but uh shoot is that leaking No, I thought I had a leak. <laughs> That's why you don't want to over tighten this. Same with the oil plug. You over tighten it and that aluminum will break. And then you're in. And you're in for a major repair. But, uh, that didn't take very much. That's, I might have got a half bottle in there. Well, I maybe got a half bottle in there. So we got some good fresh stuff in there for sure. Um, it's not ideal for sure, but it could definitely be worse. I know I have, at least, at least I have gear oil in there, which is <laughs> the main battle, I suppose. Okay, for the newbies out there, do not over tighten this kind of stuff. So I got it tight. And I'm just gonna go just that, just a tiny little bit past tight. And the good thing about a motorcycle is if it's leaks, you'll notice. Where a car would be a little different, be a lot harder to see. You know what I mean? If 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 you don't loosen it enough, or if you don't tighten it enough, if you leave it too loose, with a motorcycle, you'll see it right away. You know, first time you park it. with a car leaving it too loose might be a super bad idea but <laughs> anyways major lesson learned do not tighten too much okay to fill it up with oil i like to take it off its center stand
I suppose it wouldn't matter if you used a funnel, but I'm not using a funnel. I'm just gonna pour it right in there. So, Okay, so you take the spring with the magnet, put the uh, filter down in it like so, and then the whole thing fits up in there. Let's see if I can get an angle on that. Hopefully you can see. It's not that big of a deal, I suppose. But... I should have shown you with the plug. Plug goes on bottom. I should have shown the whole thing together. There it is. You got the idea. And there's some resistance, so you gotta push, turn. I think I got it pretty good. Whatever you do, do not over tighten this. Worst thing. One thing not to do. <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna take it to tight. This is this is the point of tight, and I'm just gonna go just just a tiny little bit past tight. I mean, just a just like a millimeter past the point of tight. Like I say, if it's too loose with the motorcycle, you'll know pretty quick. It'll be obvious. Over tightening these things is just just the worst thing you can do. So I put some oil in, put the dipstick cap back on, of course. I, I like to turn the engine on and then just let it sit for a while. There's gonna be oil splattered all over this, so clean that off. And then I'll just uh, tinker with it until I get the right amount in there until it's filled up totally. Let's see where we're at here. This should be pretty close. Find the fun gravity. Gravity's right there somewhere. Okay. Let's see how we're doing. Totally dry. One thing I didn't do in this video, which I usually do when I change this oil, that, that locked up nut down there, drain nut, drain plug threw me off. Usually when I change the oil, I will lean the bike way over like this. I didn't do it in this video and I should have. It's something I like to do because once you drain the oil and then uh, you, you lean it way over like this, I suppose you could lean it the other way too. There's a bunch of oil left up, left over sitting in the bottom that'll come out when you lean these bikes over. And it's the, it's the sludge of the sludge, you know. It's the very bottom oil where all the debris is going to be. But, uh, you know, all the, where the dirtiest oil will be, and then it comes out last. But like I say, I got that magnet in there, so anything metal is going to be on that magnet anyways. But I, don't know, I just feel like the dirtiest of the dirty oil will be will come out last when you lean the bike over so we didn't get every bit of the dirt oil out of there but uh anyways kind of botch this video a little bit <laughs> you got the idea and then uh there's an auto shop up here i'll dump this in there they're a dirty oil bin that someone comes and picks up every now and then when they fill it up and that'll be probably recycled one way or the other, if you take it to an auto garage, they'll probably take it off your hands for free, maybe. I don't know if they make money off it or not, they, but I know they have someone that comes and picks up their, picks up their big, big container of it. Uh, well, I sure hope that you enjoyed this video, and uh, as always, thanks for watching!
Oh yeah. There's one more thing I wanted to show. Cheap old band-aids. <laughs> I must act this this seemed like they came out of the garbage or something. But, uh, one more handy dandy little thing. Cheap bag of cat litter. Comes in handy. Also good for putting under your car tires and during ice storms. The many uses of cat poo litter, we think. 